The information provided in this video is based on scientific research and fossil analysis of Neanderthals. There is no storytelling or made-up facts here, just pure information. The Neanderthals have a long evolutionary history. The earliest known examples of Neanderthal-like fossils are around 430,000 years old. The best-known Neanderthals lived between about 130,000 and 40,000 years ago, after which all physical evidence of them vanishes. Ongoing study of the Neanderthals from the mid-1800s onwards has led to an unparalleled collection of information, blending both biological traits and cultural aspects within their environmental setting. This enables detailed examination of their morphological differences and spatial spread, a detail level unmatched in other human ancestors, the tight genetic link between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens further highlights this group's significance, as comprehending their standing clearly illuminates our own species' definition. Based on fossil discoveries at Cima de los Huesos in northern Spain and Swanscombe in Kent, it's clear that the Neanderthal lineage had firmly rooted itself in Europe by around 400,000 years ago, their species spread extensively across Eurasia, from Portugal and Wales in the west, all the way to the Altai Mountains in Siberia to the east. Alongside an Asian group called Denisovans, Neanderthals are our nearest ancient human kin. Research indicates that our species and Neanderthals had a shared ancestor. Present data from fossils and DNA imply that the evolutionary paths of Neanderthals and modern humans branched apart at least 500,000 years in the past. Certain genetic analyses suggest this split occurred around 650,000 years ago. Challenges with dating methods and the physical characteristics of fossils mean there's ongoing uncertainty among scientists about whether Neanderthals and modern humans' most recent common ancestor was Homo heidelbergensis, Homo antecessor, or a different species. The physical traits of Neanderthals, characterized by their robust physique, large nose, and pronounced brow ridges, are some of the most distinctive features that set them apart from modern humans and other hominins. These characteristics were not merely cosmetic, but served specific adaptive purposes that allowed Neanderthals to thrive in the harsh climates of Ice Age Europe and Asia. Neanderthals had a stocky build, with wider pelvises and shorter limbs compared to modern humans. This body shape is an example of Allen's rule, where endothermic animals in colder climates tend to have shorter appendages to minimize heat loss. Their muscular build also suggests a lifestyle that required significant physical exertion, including traversing rugged terrains and hunting large animals. One of the most striking features of the Neanderthal skull is its large, wide nose. This adaptation likely played a critical role in warming and humidifying the cold, dry air of their environment before it reached their lungs, a necessary adaptation for survival in Ice Age Europe. The pronounced brow ridges of Neanderthals are another defining characteristic. While the exact functional benefits of these brow ridges are debated, they may have played a role in protecting the eyes from injury or the elements, particularly in a hunting-gathering context where facial injuries could be common. Additionally, the heavy brow ridges might have been part of the Neanderthal skull's overall structure to accommodate powerful chewing muscles, as suggested by the evidence of their diet, which included tough, raw materials. The brain size of Neanderthals, which was comparable to or even larger than that of modern humans, provides a fascinating window into their cognitive abilities and the complexity of their mental capacities. This aspect of Neanderthal biology is a key indicator of their behavioral sophistication and ability to adapt to the diverse and challenging environments of Ice Age Europe. Neanderthals had an average brain volume of about 1,400 to 1,750 cubic centimetres, which is within the range of modern human brain sizes 
and in some cases even larger. This large brain size, when considered in the context of their robust physiques and the energy demands of their environment, suggests that Neanderthals had a high level of neural investment. Neanderthals had to navigate and adapt to rapidly changing environments, hunt large and dangerous animals, and find shelter. This level of adaptability implies not just intelligence in a practical sense, but the ability to innovate and share knowledge across generations. Neanderthals' sophisticated use of shelters is vividly illustrated by archaeological discoveries at various cave sites across Europe and Asia. These sites provide concrete examples of Neanderthals' adaptability and ingenuity in creating shelters that catered to their needs, utilizing both natural formations and constructing their own structures where necessary. La Ferrecy Cave, France is renowned for its Neanderthal burials, but it also provides evidence of long-term habitation by Neanderthals. The cave offered natural protection and was strategically chosen for its location. Archaeologists have found numerous stone tools and evidence of hearths, indicating its use as a residential site. Kabara Cave, Israel, is another critical site that offers insights into Neanderthal life. The discovery of the famous Kabara II Neanderthal skeleton was significant, but the site also revealed constructed hearths and a clear organization of living space, suggesting a sophisticated understanding of space utilization and social organization. Lavalios Perigordian Shelter in France is not a cave, but an open-air shelter site where Neanderthals constructed living spaces using stone and possibly wooden structures covered with animal hides. This site demonstrates Neanderthals' ability to create shelters beyond natural cave formations, adapting to their environment with available resources. In Moldova, Ukraine, evidence suggests that Neanderthals built structures using mammoth bones, indicating not only an adaptation to the cold steppe environment, but also the ability to utilize large animal remains in a creative and functional way for shelter construction. Cueva de los Aviones in Spain has yielded personal ornaments and pigments indicating symbolic behavior, but its relevance to shelter use lies in the strategic selection of the site for protection and possibly for its acoustic properties, reflecting a multifaceted understanding of cave sites as living spaces. The Mysterian tool culture associated with Neanderthals marks a significant advancement in prehistoric technology and illustrates the sophisticated tool mastery of these ancient humans. Named after the site of Le Moustier in France, where such tools were first identified, the Mousterian culture spans from approximately 160,000 to 40,000 years ago, coinciding with the presence of Neanderthals across Europe and parts of Asia. The Mousterian toolset is characterized by the use of the Levallois technique, a sophisticated method of flint napping that allowed for the production of flakes with predetermined shapes. This technique involved preparing a stone core to allow the removal of a flake of a specific size and shape, demonstrating a high level of planning and skill in tool production. Mysterian tools include a variety of flake tools, such as scrapers, points, and knives, each designed for specific tasks, from processing animal hides to butchering meat and woodworking. The diversity in the Mysterian toolset reflects a degree of specialization and adaptation to different environments and resources. For example, the tools found in sites located in forested regions differ from those in open, arid landscapes, indicating that Neanderthals tailored their tool-making strategies to their surroundings. At Lakina in France, another important site, where heavy-duty tools, such as scrapers, were found, likely used for processing wood and animal hides, indicating the varied uses of Mousterian tools. 
Tabern Cave, Israel has yielded a sequence of Mysterian layers, showcasing the evolution and variation within the Mysterian culture over time and across different regions. The ability of Neanderthals to control fire, using it for warmth, cooking and protection, is evidenced by archaeological discoveries across numerous sites. These findings demonstrate not just the use of fire, but the ability to ignite it at will, a significant technological and cognitive leap in human evolution. Sites like Torcus and Peche de Lazay 4, France have provided clear evidence of hearths, indicating controlled use of fire by Neanderthals. Charred remains and ash layers suggest not only the use of fire for warmth, but potentially for cooking, enhancing the nutritional value of their food. The discovery of a well-preserved hearth in Kabara Cave, Israel provides compelling evidence of Neanderthal's fire use. The structure and stratigraphy of the hearth indicate repeated use, suggesting that Neanderthals could maintain and control fire over extended periods. Moldova in Ukraine has evidence of large hearths associated with mammoth bone dwellings, indicating that Neanderthals used fire for heating and possibly protection. At Cueva Negra del Estrecho del Rio Quipar in Spain, evidence of early fire use by Neanderthals includes charred plant remains and burnt flint tools, suggesting not only cooking and warmth, but also the possible use of fire in tool production processes. The Neanderthal diet was indeed diverse, combining a substantial intake of meat from large game animals with plant-based foods, nuts, and possibly grains. This variety in their diet is supported by archaeological findings across different sites, indicating their adaptability and broad knowledge of the available food resources in their environments. Evidence of their consumption of large game and marine resources includes the remains of straight-tusked animals and marine creatures. Newmark Nord, Germany has provided fascinating insights into Neanderthal hunting practices and diet. Here, remains of straight-tusked elephants, Paleoloxodon antiquus, a species of large herbivore that roamed the European landscape during the Pleistocene, have been found. The association of these remains with Neanderthal stone tools suggests that Neanderthals were capable of hunting and processing these large game animals for food. The consumption of such large herbivores indicates a significant source of meat and resources, including bones and hides, for tools, clothing, and shelter. Grotta de Mosserini, Italy, has yielded numerous Neanderthal artifacts alongside remnants of marine life, including crab shells. The presence of these marine resources in conjunction with Neanderthal tools suggests that they exploited coastal ecosystems for food, expanding their dietary options beyond terrestrial game. The use of marine resources indicates a level of dietary flexibility and innovation, highlighting Neanderthal's ability to adapt their subsistence strategies to different environments. Neanderthal's hunting techniques exemplify their adaptability, intelligence, and social cooperation. The use of close-range weapons, such as spears, to hunt large prey was a significant aspect of their subsistence strategy, reflecting not only their physical prowess, but also their ability to plan, communicate, and cooperate during hunts. Schöningen, Germany is particularly noteworthy for the discovery of wooden spears dating back approximately 300,000 years. These spears, associated with Neanderthal hunters, provide direct evidence of prehistoric hunting weapons. The spears are carefully crafted with balanced proportions suitable for throwing or thrusting at close range. The presence of horse remains alongside these spears suggests that Neanderthals used them to hunt large prey, demonstrating an understanding of group hunting tactics and the behavior of their target animals. 
Footprints found at Le Roselle, France, have been attributed to a group of Neanderthals, including adults and children, providing a snapshot of a social group. The context of these footprints, alongside stone tools and animal remains, suggests that hunting and group activities were central to Neanderthal life. The evidence points to the use of coordinated strategies and possibly the division of labor in hunting expeditions. The use of close-range weapons like spears required Neanderthals to approach large and potentially dangerous animals, such as woolly mammoths, woolly rhinoceroses, and aurochs at close quarters. This hunting method implies a high degree of risk and required physical strength, agility, and strategic planning. Hunters would need to understand the behavior of their prey, including how to predict its movements and how to work together to outmaneuver and successfully take down such large animals. Neanderthal burial practices provide significant insights into their cultural complexity, including possible beliefs in an afterlife or rituals of mourning. These practices are evidenced by archaeological finds at various sites where Neanderthals buried their dead, occasionally with grave goods, indicating a level of symbolic thought and emotional depth. Perhaps one of the most famous sites for Neanderthal burials, Shanidar Cave has revealed multiple burials, with one of the most notable being Shanidar IV, often referred to as the flower burial. Pollen found in the sediment layers of this grave suggests that flowers may have been placed with the body, implying a ritualistic or symbolic aspect to the burial. La Chapelle aux Saints, France known for the discovery of an elderly Neanderthal man, buried in a shallow pit. The careful placement of the body in a fetal position, along with the absence of scavenger marks, suggests intentional burial. The individual showed signs of various ailments, indicating he may have been cared for by the group, with his burial reflecting a form of respect or mourning. La Ferrasi is another significant site that has yielded multiple Neanderthal burials, including adults and children. The deliberate excavation of graves and the positioning of the bodies provide clear evidence of intentional burial practices. The presence of grave goods, such as tools, alongside the bodies, suggests that these items may have held personal or symbolic significance. The Kabara cave site in Israel includes the famous Kabara II burial, where a Neanderthal male was found buried in a pit. The hyoid bone discovered with the skeleton has contributed to discussions on Neanderthal speech capabilities, but the burial itself indicates a structured treatment of the dead. These sites collectively demonstrate that Neanderthal burial practices were more sophisticated than previously thought, suggesting a cognitive and emotional complexity akin to modern humans. Evidence of Neanderthals engaging in the creation of art and ornaments, particularly through the use of eagle talons as pendants, offers profound insights into their cognitive abilities and the presence of symbolic thought. Such artifacts indicate not just a utilitarian lifestyle focused on survival, but also an awareness of identity, aesthetics, and possibly social status or group belonging. One of the most compelling pieces of evidence for Neanderthal symbolic behavior comes from the Krapina Neanderthal site in Croatia, dating back approximately 130,000 years. Here, archaeologists discovered eagle talons with distinct cut marks and wear patterns that suggest they were used as pendants or jewelry. The talons bear signs of deliberate modification, including notches and smoothing at points that would facilitate being strung together or attached to a soft material. In addition to the use of eagle talons as personal adornments, evidence of Neanderthals creating and wearing other types of ornaments, such as decorative shells, further underscores their capacity for symbolic thought and aesthetic appreciation. At Cueva de los Aviones, Spain, researchers discovered marine shells 
that had been colored with pigments like red and yellow ochre, dating back approximately 115,000 years. These shells show deliberate modifications, including holes, suggesting they were worn as pendants or incorporated into clothing. At Grotta de Moscherini in Italy, numerous shells from the Mediterranean coast, some of which appear to have been intentionally collected and worked. The presence of these shells far from their natural marine environment suggests that Neanderthals valued them either for their aesthetic qualities or for symbolic purposes. The analysis of dental plaque from Neanderthal remains has offered groundbreaking insights into their use of medicinal plants, revealing a previously unrecognized depth of knowledge about natural remedies. This evidence points to Neanderthals possessing an understanding of the medicinal properties of plants and their application in treating pain and illness, indicative of an early form of herbal medicine. A particularly revealing study of Neanderthal dental plaque from El Cidron Cave, Spain showed traces of poplar bark, which contains salicylic acid, the active ingredient in modern aspirin. This finding suggests that Neanderthals were aware of the pain-relieving properties of poplar and may have used it to treat ailments such as headaches, toothaches, and fevers. Additionally, the dental plaque contained traces of a type of mold that produces penicillin, an antibiotic, indicating that Neanderthals might have had knowledge of its infection-fighting properties long before the modern discovery of antibiotics. Analysis of dental plaque from Neanderthals at Spy Cave, Belgium also revealed the consumption of various plants with medicinal properties, further supporting the notion that Neanderthals had a sophisticated understanding of herbal medicine. Among the plants identified were chamomile and yarrow, both known for their anti-inflammatory and antiseptic effects, suggesting their use in treating wounds and preventing or treating infections. These findings challenge the stereotype of Neanderthals as simple hunter-gatherers with only basic survival skills. Instead, they paint a picture of a species capable of complex health-related behavior, including the selection and use of specific plants for their therapeutic effects. The use of medicinal plants implies not only knowledge of their environment, but also an understanding of the body and its responses to various treatments. The social structure of Neanderthals, characterized by small group sizes and close-knit family bands, offers insight into their way of life, survival strategies, and the dynamics of their interactions. Archaeological evidence, including the size and layout of living sites, supports the notion that Neanderthals lived in small groups, which had significant implications for their social behaviors, cooperative hunting, child-rearing practices, and possibly even their language and communication. Archaeological sites provide crucial data on the living arrangements and group sizes of Neanderthals. The spatial distribution of hearths, sleeping areas, and activity zones within these sites offers a window into daily life and social organization. La Ferrecy in France, known for its extensive Neanderthal occupation layers and has provided valuable insights into Neanderthal's social structure. The arrangement of domestic areas suggests that activities were organized and took place within a communal setting, indicative of small cooperative groups. At Kabara Cave, Israel, the habitation layers and evidence of constructed features, such as hearths and post holes, suggest that Neanderthals used this site repeatedly, possibly as a family or clan. The presence of multiple individuals remains over time also supports the idea of small, stable group sizes. The question of Neanderthal language capability has fascinated scientists for decades, offering insights into the cognitive abilities and social complexity of these ancient humans. Key anatomical evidence, particularly concerning the structure of the Neanderthal hyoid bone and the morphology of their inner ear, 
suggests that Neanderthals possess the physical capacity for speech and complex vocal communication comparable to modern humans. The hyoid bone is a small, U-shaped bone in the throat that supports the tongue and is crucial for speech. In Neanderthals, the hyoid bone shares a similar shape and position to that of modern humans, as evidenced by the discovery at the Kabara Cave in Israel. This similarity suggests that Neanderthals had a vocal tract capable of producing a wide range of sounds necessary for spoken language. The inner ear, particularly the morphology of the bony labyrinth, plays a critical role in hearing. Studies have shown that the inner ear structure of Neanderthals closely resembles that of modern humans, suggesting they could perceive similar frequencies, including those used in human speech. This auditory capacity is essential for language comprehension and communication, implying that Neanderthals were likely attuned to the nuances of spoken language, whether their own or that of Homo sapiens, with whom they coexisted and interacted. The anatomical evidence related to the Neanderthal hyoid bone and ear structure strongly supports the possibility that they had the physical capacity for language or complex vocal communication. The discovery of cave paintings attributed to Neanderthals has significantly altered our understanding of their cognitive abilities and cultural sophistication. While the notion of Neanderthals as artists was once contentious, recent research has provided compelling evidence that these ancient humans engaged in symbolic expression through cave art, challenging the long-held view of Neanderthals as lacking in complex cognitive skills and creativity. One of the most striking pieces of evidence comes from La Pasiega, part of the Cantabrian caves, where a series of lines and geometric patterns have been dated to more than 64,000 years ago, a time when only Neanderthals inhabited Europe. The use of red ochre to create these patterns suggests a symbolic or communicative intent behind the markings. This discovery is significant because it predates the arrival of modern humans in Europe, indicating that Neanderthals were the artists. At Maltravieso Cave, hand stencils found on the cave walls have similarly been dated to the Neanderthal era. The creation of these stencils involving blowing pigment around hands pressed against the cave wall demonstrates not only artistic expression, but also an understanding of complex techniques for creating enduring images. These hand stencils serve as direct evidence of Neanderthal's capacity for symbolic thought and their desire to leave marks that communicate their presence. The coexistence and interbreeding of Homo sapiens and Neanderthals are well documented through genetic evidence and supported by archaeological findings from various sites across Europe and Asia. While Denisova Cave is significant for uncovering the Denisovans, other sites have played crucial roles in revealing the interactions between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals. Vindija Cave has provided some of the most direct evidence of Neanderthal and modern human interactions. Neanderthal remains dated to as recently as 40,000 years ago contain genetic material indicating interbreeding with Homo sapiens. The analysis of Neanderthal genomes from this site has shown that up to 2.6% of the DNA of modern non-Africans can be traced back to Neanderthals, suggesting that interbreeding occurred before the Neanderthals' disappearance. The Oase Cave offered groundbreaking evidence of Homo sapiens and Neanderthal interbreeding in the form of a human jawbone dating back approximately 40,000 years. This specimen has been found to contain between 6% to 9% Neanderthal DNA, one of the highest percentages found in a Homo sapiens individual, indicating that interbreeding might have occurred as recently as a few generations before the individual lived. While primarily known for its Neanderthal remains, El Cidron has contributed to the understanding of Neanderthal genetics, including aspects 
related to their interbreeding with Homo sapiens. DNA extracted from Neanderthal specimens at El Cidron has been compared with modern human genomes, reinforcing the evidence of genetic exchange and shared mutations. The site where the famous Old Man of La Chapelle was discovered has also provided indirect evidence of Neanderthal and modern human interactions through the study of Neanderthal morphology and its implications for interbreeding. The presence of Homo sapiens in nearby regions at overlapping times further supports scenarios of coexistence and potential interaction. The Neanderthal Genome Project, initiated in 2006, was a groundbreaking scientific endeavor aimed at sequencing the Neanderthal genome. Led by Svante Pebo at the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology in Leipzig, Germany, the project's goal was to compare the Neanderthal genetic sequence with that of modern humans and chimpanzees, providing insights into the evolutionary history of Homo sapiens and our relationship with Neanderthals. The project findings suggest that interbreeding with Neanderthals might have been beneficial to modern humans migrating into Europe and Asia, providing genetic variations that helped adapt to new environments. Neanderthal genes related to keratin protein, for example, may have contributed to more robust skin and hair, offering protection against the colder climates outside of Africa. The Neanderthal Genome Project has also shed light on the population history of Neanderthals themselves, including evidence of low genetic diversity and inbreeding within Neanderthal communities. This information is crucial for understanding the challenges Neanderthals faced and their eventual extinction. The project utilized advanced DNA sequencing and extraction techniques, setting a high standard for ancient DNA research. By extracting DNA from Neanderthal bones several tens of thousands of years old, the project overcame significant technical challenges, including contamination and degradation of genetic material. The dispersal of Neanderthals across Europe and Asia represents one of the most remarkable chapters in human evolutionary history, showcasing their adaptability to a wide range of climates and landscapes. From around 400,000 years ago until their disappearance approximately 40,000 years ago, Neanderthals inhabited diverse environments from the cold, arid plains of Siberia to the warm, Mediterranean coasts of Iberia. Neanderthals were primarily concentrated in Europe, with their range extending from the Iberian Peninsula in the west to the Altai Mountains in Siberia to the east. They also lived in parts of the Middle East, including the Levant, which served as a critical crossroads for movements between Africa, Europe, and Asia. In the northern latitudes, they faced glacial conditions, requiring them to develop strategies for coping with extreme cold. This included the use of fire, construction of shelters, and the hunting of large game, such as mammoths and woolly rhinoceroses, which were well suited to the tundra and steppe environments. In contrast, Neanderthals living in the Mediterranean regions experienced milder climates, where they could exploit a broader range of resources, including marine food sources and diverse plant life. The interaction zones between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens are pivotal in understanding the complexities of prehistoric human relationships, offering a fascinating glimpse into possible scenarios of cultural and technological exchange. These interactions likely occurred in overlapping territories in Europe and Asia, where evidence suggests both groups coexisted for thousands of years. Evidence from archaeological sites indicates that Neanderthals and Homo sapiens shared and possibly exchanged technologies. For instance, the Chateau-Peronian culture, associated with the late Neanderthals in parts of France and Spain, showcases sophisticated stone tools and ornaments that resemble those of the early modern humans' Aurignacian culture. This overlap suggests 
that Neanderthals might have adopted certain tool-making techniques from Homo sapiens, or that there was a mutual exchange of knowledge. The presence of symbolic artifacts and cave art in regions inhabited by both Neanderthals and Homo sapiens suggests the potential for cultural influences to cross between the two groups. Archaeological sites have also shown that Neanderthals and Homo sapiens exploited similar resources, from hunting the same animal species to utilizing similar plant resources. Such shared resource use could have facilitated indirect cultural exchange through the observation of each other's hunting strategies and tool use, even in the absence of direct contact. Denny, officially known as Denisova 11, is an extraordinary find in the study of ancient human species. Discovered in Denisova Cave in the Altai Mountains of Siberia, this individual was a female who lived approximately 90,000 years ago. What makes Denny uniquely fascinating is that she was the offspring of two different species of ancient humans, a Neanderthal mother and a Denisovan father. This discovery provides direct evidence of interbreeding between Neanderthals and Denisovans, two groups that inhabited Eurasia alongside and before modern Homo sapiens. The fragmentary bone that led to Denny's discovery was initially thought to be just another piece of the Denisovan puzzle. However, upon genetic analysis led by a team at the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology, it was revealed to be something unprecedented. The first known direct offspring of two different hominin groups. This analysis showed that Denny inherited approximately 50% of her DNA from each parent group, confirming her mixed heritage. Denny's existence indicates that Neanderthals and Denisovans did not only share territories, but also engaged in intimate interactions. These groups were not isolated. Instead, they formed part of a complex web of ancient human species that occasionally interbred. This interbreeding likely had significant implications for genetic diversity and the transmission of genetic traits across populations. Denisova Cave, where Denny's remains were found, is a key archaeological site that has yielded evidence of habitation by both Neanderthals and Denisovans. The presence of Neanderthal genes in Denisovans and vice versa, as revealed through genomic studies, points to multiple instances of interbreeding. These events likely occurred at various times and places where their ranges overlapped, contributing to the genetic makeup of both groups. The extinction of Neanderthals, which occurred around 40,000 years ago, is a subject of intense study and debate among scientists. Various theories have been proposed to explain their disappearance, ranging from climatic changes and environmental pressures to interactions with Homo sapiens. It's likely that a combination of factors contributed to their extinction rather than a single cause. Neanderthals lived through multiple glacial and interglacial periods, experiencing significant fluctuations in climate. These changes would have impacted the availability of resources such as food and shelter, making survival increasingly challenging. During colder periods, the ice would have expanded, reducing the habitable landscapes and making it harder for Neanderthals to find food. Conversely, warmer periods might have led to the expansion of forests, which were less ideal environments for the hunting strategies of Neanderthals, who thrived in open landscapes. Related to climate change, environmental pressures such as reduced territory and fragmentation of populations could have led to decreased genetic diversity and increased vulnerability to disease. Smaller isolated populations are more susceptible to the effects of inbreeding, which can lead to a higher frequency of deleterious mutations and reduced fitness of the population as a whole. The arrival of Homo sapiens in Europe and Asia roughly coincides with the period of Neanderthal decline, 
suggesting that competition between the two species may have played a significant role in Neanderthal extinction. Modern humans may have competed with Neanderthals for the same resources, such as food and shelter. Interactions between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens might have led to the transmission of diseases to which Neanderthals had no immunity. Similar to the devastating impact of diseases on Native American populations, diseases brought by modern humans could have significantly reduced Neanderthal populations. Overhunting or shifts in animal populations due to climate change could have led to a critical reduction in Neanderthals' food sources, exacerbating the challenges posed by environmental changes and competition. Though Neanderthals are no more among us physically, their genetic legacy goes on. Attempts to malign them as mere brutes must be countered. Thankfully, science is playing a big role in this. They were as human as human can be, and we must treat them with respect. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.